It worked. A purple alloy with a striated net-like surface. It worked perfectly. Newton, like all alchemists, concealed his ingredients in colorful riddles. Our body, thus compounded, is called our hermaphrodite. Being of two sexes, and it is both father and mother to the stone. Hermaphrodite refers to the regulus of antimony that you get by combining stibnite with iron at high temperature. Newton uses codes like the green lion, the sordid whore, and the menstrual blood of the sordid whore to describe other metals. So what was Newton keeping concealed? Important clues have been found at King's College, Cambridge, where Newton's manuscripts, bought by the economist Maynard Keynes, are securely kept. Professor Rutanzi says Newton's own handwritten copy of an ancient alchemical treatise reveals the secret purpose of his alchemical quest. This is the Tabula Smaragdina. The whole secret of the Philosopher's Stone is supposed to be concealed in this pretty short document. But Professor Rotanzi says Newton was seeking the Philosopher's Stone not to become rich by turning metal into gold, but as part of his search for God's secrets. The alchemists believed that this document not only described how God created the universe, it also enabled the alchemist to imitate the work of God. And by imitating the work of God, he could achieve miracles in nature. He is not a magician in the sense that he wants to master these forces so that he can use them to do marvelous things. It's ultimately to understand the mystery of, and, and secrets of God's creation. Newton believed God had handed down his secrets to disciples like Noah and that they survived in fragmented form in scripture, ancient text, myths, and especially in alchemical literature. He never loses faith in alchemy as concealing some of the greatest secrets of the universe, if you could decode them. Newton felt he was specially chosen by God to decode them. He writes his name in Latin, Isaacus Newtonus, when he plays around with the anagram and he turns it into Jehovah Sanctus Unus, one holy God. So there are already signs there of a fairly strong sense in the young Cambridge student that he's odd, that he's special, that he's picked out, that he is, to use the alchemical phrase, an adept someone particularly equipped by the gift of grace, not only to pursue his studies, but to interpret the world. Newton believed that through alchemy, he was finding God's secrets. This strange mix of what was called vulgar chemistry, myth and mystical imagery, helped form his unique perception of the world. Professor Newman believes one of Newton's basic experiments gave him an insight into the true nature of color. Now, when Newton performs his optical experiments with the prism, it's quite possible that he was thinking of the prism as dividing up the white light into different types of particles in much the same way as you're doing it when you distill the more subtle particles from the more gross ones. Just when Newton was furtively immersing himself fully in the mysteries of the crucible, his earlier scientific achievements brought him worldly advancement.
But since I observe the geometers that are mistaken in a particular property of light that belongs to refractions, tacitly founding their demonstration on a certain physical hypothesis. Age just 26, well he was made Lucasian professor of mathematics. Now he had to give lectures, but he had little time for students, and they had little interest in this incomprehensible, prudish professor. Years later, his assistant would record. So few went to him, and fewer that understood him, that oftentimes he did in a manner for want of hearers, read to the walls. But Newton faced a terrible dilemma the day he had started to climb the academic ladder. He would be required to take holy orders and become a cleric in the Anglican Church. This set him on a collision course that threatened to end in his disgrace. He researched the history of Christianity and became convinced that both the Catholic and the Anglican Church were founded on a corruption of the Word of God. Now, because Newton was so convinced that God is extremely powerful and unique, Newton, as the, as the saying goes, reads himself into heresy. In other words, Newton begins to minimize, to play down eventually to deny the divinity of Christ. And Newton comes to the conclusion very early on that the Trinity is a blasphemy on the first commandment because the first commandment says that thou shall have no other gods before me and the worship of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost from Newton's point of view is a heresy. So by the early 1670s, Newton had become a secret heretic. He was convinced the doctrine of the Trinity, to which Henry VIII had dedicated Trinity College, was a form of blasphemy. If Newton had been exposed while he was at Cambridge as an anti-Trinitarian, uh, his career would have been over. He would have been ostracized. It's almost certain that it wouldn't have involved uh, being put to death, but uh, definitely uh, prison would have been uh, one possibility. <laughs> Newton would also have risked becoming a target for mobs of heretic hunters, often whipped into a frenzy by the clergy. A heretic, like a witch, is a threat, not just to truth, but to you. It's, it's a physical threat. It's going to compromise and corrupt the community. So very often, we know, you know from witch hunts, that the mob the people will take direct action against these sorts of individuals. People are lynched, people are kicked to death, they're burned. The violence of the times is reflected in Newton's suppressed manuscripts. In these, he focuses his anger on the monks who corrupted Christianity by imposing the Trinity. We can see page after page of uh, material in which he tries to argue that the early church fathers, they're actually villains, uh, they're criminals. And in some cases, he actually calls them murderers for some of the things that they had done. And they followed vanity and became vain. When requested to give a lay sermon, Newton used the Bible to condemn the Catholic Church's use of idolatry. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served the Baal. In the privacy of his rooms, Newton rejoiced in the torture of nuns he reads about in an ancient history book. First he commanded ye sacred nuns or virgins to be assembled and searched by midwives, and then hung up with weights at their feet, and tortured with heated plates of iron applied to several parts of their bodies, saying, Confess to us how you bishops and priests lie with you. Oh, he loves some of it, where you know, tragically awful things happen.